From Puyallup to Pinehurst, this is Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk powered by the Pacific Northwest. The fastest 15. It's brought to you by IRG Physical and Hand Therapy. They allow us to bring this to you commercial free. And this is our number. It's time for the fastest 15 minutes in the news. This is Dory's Fastest 15. Brock Heward and Dave Wyman in here for Dory Monson. And uh, Dory claims that those hour number two things that he does, that no one is the same. Uh, he, he, he claims that every day that he's done the show, he's done something really? different. Really? Yeah. That's his claim, huh? First up, yeah, that's his claim to fame. <laughs> that's all he's got. Uh, first up on the Fastest 15, Brock, you love this poem by Dave Niehaus. We got spring. You're going down to spring training next week. Yep. I'm going the week after that. The Mariners, Vegas has set their over under at 70. We did a time capsule prediction on our show. <laughs> yes. You know how many wins I yeah. predicted? <laughs> you heard this? Like 92. 90. <laughs> 90 wins. I'm going to be a genius Bless your heart. when this happens, but uh, probably not going to happen. Probably not. But, you know, every year you start to get excited about the team, and I don't know about you, Brock, every year I've, like, bought in and, like, okay, I can't wait to see these young kids. But, man, Dave Niehaus with his uh, his poem that he mm. read, I don't know how many years ago, uh, still lives on in this city. Someone once said, you don't grip a baseball. A baseball grips you. It fills our days and brightens our nights over the course of a season and the span of a lifetime. We share hope, drama, and joy. It brings us all closer together nine innings at a time. It's the game we live. It's the game we love. Welcome back, baseball. <laughs> Welcome back. Everybody loves Dave Niehaus. Yeah. The the call on Ichiro where he, he throws out, I can't remember the runner, from right field, and he's like, he's D-O-A. I just love, I can't get enough of Dave Niehaus. You know, Brock, this is an older person sport. Mm. Is it not? And, you know, and here's what <laughs> I said this the other day on the, our show. I got some people were laughing at me, but I'm like, look, baseball doesn't need to change to try to attract younger people. You know why? Because people are always getting older. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of grow into baseball. I mean, I, I feel like the the older I've gotten, the more I've appreciated. And, you, and they always freak out and they look around and go, oh, my gosh, there's all these older people watching baseball. But there's an endless supply of people getting because we're all going to get older, getting older. Yeah, we so, all like you know, our routines not, when we get a little older. Yeah, so let's not panic and try to change all of the the rules and, and everything like that. So I just think baseball is fine the way it is. Yeah, and the reason old Dave Niehaus here right there is today is the actual start spring training game number one. Uh, it was supposed to start today, in fact, but it was rained out. <laughs> so the uh, the rain, the snow, the cold, all that nasty wintry mix pushed south and actually down in Arizona, it's been miserable. You're right. We're going to go there next week. It's going to be beautiful. By the time you get there in two weeks to do you guys' show in the afternoon, it'll be beautiful. Uh, but today, hope springs eternal. That's why every year, Dave, you buy in because it's true in baseball. Hope springs eternal, and I don't think anybody was any better at painting those pictures and painting that hope than one of Dory Monson's favorites and my favorite, and that was Dave Niehaus. Yeah. Yeah, I like talking to Rick Riz about him. Rick's my favorite. I wasn't really listening to baseball as much when Niehaus, but I just hear all of It's because you were calls. young, Dave. Yeah, exactly. Back when you were young, you were it. much more into football and basketball, yeah. but now you're getting older. Yeah, and Rick Riz is my guy, man. And, I love listening to Rick. And everybody's going to get older, and as you get older, you're going to start to love Like baseball. I said, it's an endless supply. People are not going to stop getting older, Major League Baseball. So you don't need to change it and, and make it some young person's game with selfies and crap like that. Uh, Brock, the one storyline I'm yeah. actually dreading, Felix. Yeah. Uh, do you feel that way? I'm, I feel uncomfortable about yeah. this because I've said I don't think he's going to make – I don't think he's going to be on the team at the end of the year. I don't think he's going to make the starting lineup. He doesn't want to go to the bullpen. We asked Jerry DePoto about him becoming 
a bullpen or closer type of guy, and he goes, I don't even think about that. Mm-hmm. So where does Felix go? What happens? Well, back to your uh, comparison there of us all getting older. Father time wins all the time mm-hmm. in sports. And father Undefeated. time has been beating up Felix the last few years, and it is hard to watch. It's hard to watch the king who just necessarily hasn't evolved his game either. I mean, what made him the king and made him one of the greats and, and probably the greatest pitcher in the history of this franchise was just that bulldog mentality that he was not going to change. The King's Court was built out there that loved him, that adored him. And I think of any Mariner, you're right. This has been hard to watch. Hard to watch his body break down. Hard to watch his performance break down to a degree. And this will probably be the last of it. Is this a contract year for him uh, where he's got to prove uh, that he's got anything left or he'll finish his career somewhere Well, and he's else. also got to prove whether or not he's going to be a Hall of Famer. And they talked to him about that a few years ago. We talked to Ryan Divish the other day. And so our question last year was, you know, adapt. His adaption to his age, is it that he couldn't or that he wouldn't? Yeah. And when we talked to Divish, he said it's more that he should have started doing that a couple of years ago. So it's kind of a sad story, but we'll see. Maybe, uh, maybe Felix pulls something out of his hat. And, and if he does, the Mariners win 90 games. There we go. There you go, as Dave Wyman predicted. Uh, can we stick to baseball here, Dave? Yeah. I think you guys played this sound maybe yesterday on your show. It was Tim Tebow. You guys, uh, Nicole, you guys have been sitting on this a little bit, right? You yeah. haven't played it this week. This is some of my favorite sound. A t- Tim Tebow is a guy that can be every once in a while just a little bit polarizing in today's culture. I happen to, uh, to love a lot of what he's had to say through the years. Been a big supporter of his. I don't know if I've ever heard in about 90 seconds Tim Tebow speak some wisdom and some perspective that really nobody could take apart. You know, he usually gets criticized for just about everything that he says and every stance that he has. Hard to nitpick any message. And you failed, and I'm very passionate about that. Um, and I think the reason that a lot of um, how much you will be criticized, and what if I fall flat on my face, and so fear and doubt and all these things creep in, and um, I just don't believe that's the healthiest way to live. I don't want to have to live with fear or doubt every day, and you know, regardless of what everyone here says about me, that doesn't define me, and I'm so grateful that doesn't define me. There's one thing that defines me, and that's what God says about me, and, and besides that, I get to go live out my dreams and try to help as many people along the way as possible. Not letting others define you. I think that's a message that's probably both on the right and the left. Do not let other folks define you and do not, do not attempt some, or not, not attempt something because you're so fearful of what everybody's going to say. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the thing I worry about with kids now because, you know, we've got camera phones and, you know, you see these uh, things on the internet, these lists of epic fails, Mm -hmm. and then they even have it in sports. And I'm like, Hey, listen, man. That guy is out there trying, and he's out there at least doing something. And you see a lot of kids that sit on the sidelines and just criticize, and the reason why they do that is because they're afraid to go out and do it themselves because they're afraid of all the criticism and everything. And that's something that Tim Tebow is talking about there, that you know, don't let people define you and go out and let it all hang out there and don't be afraid to fail. That, that's the, that's the, the one thing you know that you know, I try to give a message in Brock – your football camp was so awesome this last year. I just love the message, everything that you had about that. It allowed us all to talk to the kids about, you know, being vulnerable and, you know, what it means. You mentioned earlier the masculinity and things like that. That It's about helping other people. Yep. It's about encouraging other people. And so, you know, and I, I know this might sound kind of touchy-feely right now for – for you and I, but no, I, I think that's what it's that's what it's about. And so if you can start to get that mess, but I think it's harder and harder now because of all of the access that you have to it's all out there you know these you know i've got a uh you know something i took a picture of on my camera that's that's out there that you know and everybody's afraid that they're going to get clowned and look bad and be one of these guys that ends up on youtube so this was i believe sunday it was over the weekend that tebow had this press conference and you can imagine the whole room full of lots of that new york media Many that just scoffed at him for trying baseball. I mean, what are you doing? Like, you failed in football. You're a failure. You're a fail of a quarterback. Why are you going to fail in baseball? And I love that he's just, like, continued to attack it. He was a double-A all-star. He got invited to major league camp. He's a long shot to make major league still, but he's just not going to back down. And, you know, he's not going to listen at all those that scoff him. It was fascinating. So that came out Sunday. And Sunday night, we had a bunch of families at our house for a cool little get-together. And we kind of watched video, and we talked. It was kind of a community group deal. And uh, the lesson was on basically the power of words. 
And the power of just saying positive and building positive thought and positive encouragement versus tearing down negative. And when you're raising teenagers today, it's, I'm trying to navigate that world. And Dave, Good luck you, with that. Yeah, you, you've been there. Yeah, you've had to, to do that as well. And just the power of those words. And in this group here, we got to thinking, and we had all sorts of different ages and different people, different spectrums. And it was like, do you remember those that have really built into you in a positive way? Can you remember a positive or do you remember much more of the negative? I'm all positive. You, you do? Know, I, I look back on my life and I don't eat. I don't, I don't. I don't think about the negative things that happen. I think about the positive. What's the things most that positive thing someone has said to you? That's interesting because you are different than this entire group. We had a, a bunch of you know, all different ages, and they're like, I don't remember. My, I do remember getting told this, and I remember getting told that, and I yeah. remember the popular girl in eighth grade telling me I look like the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. Like thirty years later, I still remember that. Like, I still remember those. She n- meant it in modern no, terms. No, 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 like, no, Brock, no, you're no, a uh-uh. beast. No, no, like, no. You're no, badass. No, not she meant at all. when he's a prince. I was uh, telling the story on my sports radio side. I remember going into the gym at Sumner High School and their student body chanting, Heward the Duck. Heward the Duck. Like, Howard the Duck? The movie was out at the time because I had big old lips. Right? So they <laughs> called me Heward the Duck. And I kind of liked that. I didn't mind it from an a- like an athletic deal. Like, I'm going to rip you guys apart limb from limb. Yeah. Like chip athlete- on your shoulder. Yeah, like athletically, I didn't necessarily mind that. I will never, to the day I die, forget some of just that tearing down. Oh, my god! And now amplify it a thousandfold with these devices. Yeah. Here's the one thing I'd say, though. that There's a, a certain amount of toughness that things that you had to go through. Like, you know, they talk about bullying. I got bullied when I was younger. And then, you know, I got to a point where I could, I wouldn't trade that in. I had something called cystic acne all over my shoulders, and I'd have people screaming at me when I had to play basketball, you know, mm. talking about zits and, hey, you know, that's disgusting, and screaming and yelling at me in a gym. I'm 16 years old, you know, having to wear a stupid tank top and short shorts. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't trade that. Mm. That that helped me. I think it, it made me who I am. So I think, you know, that's – there is a certain amount, like, we don't want to sit there and baby-proof the world. Yep. But, you know, you asked me who's the most encouraging person yeah. in, in my life. is my mom. Very specifically, it's probably in 1975. And she said, there's nobody like you, and you're never going to have this day back again. So go out and make it special. And, and yeah, my mom, and then, you know, some of my coaches. Of course, I had coaches scream and yell at me, too. Sure. But, you know, those are the kinds of things that I think are done out of love, you know. So. I remember my mom coming in junior high, like eighth grade, pulling me out of class. I had some tough days. Likewise, had some acne and everything else. Had yeah. people, like, calling me the beast. And she could tell. And she was a teacher, and she came over to our school. Same deal, like around lunchtime. She, like, pulled me aside. And it's basically the same thing. Now, she was kind of cute. She's like, well... If they're making fun of your zits, they can't even see your zits. Like, you're so much taller than them anyway. Like, the reality <laughs> of them actually says, so she's trying yeah. to, like, paint the picture in a prettier way. Mm-hmm. But it's that same level of encouragement. And to me, that's what I take from Tim Tebow right there. Don't listen to all the hate. You're going to have so many. Dave, if you and I over the course of the show and our oh, yeah. show, or if I looked at nothing but Twitter while I'm doing a broadcast and you're the worst and you're the horrible – and all that naysayer, if that is what you are just carrying around with you, you will not grow into what you're built to be. Right. And I think that's the message I hear so clearly from Tim. That's why I love it. That's why at the camps and when you go out and you just try to empower kids, like just there's going to be so you know, your kids, you want to protect them. You want to go everywhere. And, you know, anybody says anything about your kids, you want to you want to kill yep. them. Right. You know, you have to allow them to, to take care of themselves. And I think that's where that coming from a big – have you seen Tim Tebow lately? I mean, he looks like a monster. Is he almost too muscle-bound? Encouragement along that lines, because it was in the lesson that we had in this group, and that was if you've got positive thought, share it with somebody. Yeah. And how many times do you find yourself in your day where you think something positive about somebody or encouraging, you're just like, eh, yeah. you, know, you just don't you really You know what, Brock, sh- let me – Yeah, you don't really Let me share. tell you something. You don't look like a duck at all. <laughs> How's well, that? Well, great.
those features. One day you'll grow into those lips, and they won't be calling you Hewer the Duck anymore. Your eyes are a little wide apart. Uh, there's no question about that. You know what, Dave? I'm glad you, you had that surgery where your eye doesn't tuck into the <laughs> corner of your face anymore. <laughs> I'm really proud of that. Sean, I'm really glad you're voicing everything, like on every station in this building, buddy. You're going to become a star. Sean's I told you time. that. Thanks, bro. Thanks. Yeah, there's one story, uh, a tragic story. There's no other way to kind of spin this ahead, but a tragic story last night of a well, one of the most famous and best basketball coaches collegiately on planet Earth, and just a tragic story last night that he he endured, and I don't think he's alone in just some of the well, challenges of driving late at night and in a very unfortunate story. I think some of us may not share in the tragedy of it, but we've been awfully close to it. I know I have. Uh, we'll get to that story next year on the Dory Monson Show right here on 97.3 Cairo FM.